Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic as ever to have you here because we are working on part three of this stiletto dagger right here. We, uh, we inspired it from some uh, 1500s, 1600s, kind of the Renaissance style era of stilettos. So it's got three edges on it, which means that when you stab somebody with this, it is very hard to... No, I shouldn't talk about that, should I? That's a bad idea. I think maybe if we whisper about it, it's okay. Okay. It means that historically when people were stabbed with these things, it was very difficult to, to fix them. So, that makes it an excellent prison shank. It is a very beautiful prison shank. We spent a lot of time designing this. Will, Will, it's not good marketing lingo. <laughs> it is a very exquisite prison shank. Ah, Got to yes. use the exquisite word. Right. Very right. good. There we go. <laughs> good stuff. We've done a lot of lathe work on this. We got the uh, the Monarch lathe up and running finally, and we we gave it a little bit of a workout with we this thing. We did indeed. Almost every part on this, aside, uh, no, literally every part on this piece, including the blade, the flower elements, the pieces of Damascus steel that were turned, and this piece of bronze that has a whole bunch of beautiful diamonds in it, every part in here, had to get put on the lathe. Anyway, we have a lot of work to do on it today. But before we jump into today's video, I would like to thank today's sponsor, which is NordVPN. NordVPN is all about keeping you safe while it is that you're on the internet, and they do that by having thousands of servers in over 61 countries in the world that act as an intermediary between you and the websites you browse. NordVPN is going to be giving you 75% of a three-year plan when you go to nordvpn.com forward slash forge, and they're going to be giving you an extra month for free when you use code FORGE at checkout. So be sure to check them out at the end of the video. Thank you, Nord, for being a longtime sponsor of the show and keeping us safe while we are on the internet. Thank you guys for being here. Let's talk about some of the design issues we got on this bad boy. Now, if you're following on from part two, you'll remember me talking about one of the problems that I had with this design in that we're going bronze, steel, bronze, steel, bronze, bronze, steel, as opposed to steel, bronze, steel, bronze, steel, bronze, steel, bronze. I feel like we have a little bit too much bronze in this one area and we need to break it up. And that's where this piece that I've been holding in my hands for the last couple of minutes comes into play. This is a little offcut of the Damascus that was used not only for the blade but also for these Damascus elements in the handle piece. And my plan is to turn this piece of Damascus into a spacer that goes between our flower element and our guard or quillian element just to break up the flow of that design and hopefully make it look a little more balanced to the eye. So that is going to be my task to start off with. Now as you saw in the last episodes we have this little small sound blasting unit and the plan is to use the sound blaster for the final finish on these parts. Do you want to run through a little bit of the idea here and what it is that you're going to do? So this idea came from Niels Vandenberg, Black Dragon Forge, who had, we designed this dagger with and who was just here in episodes one and two. Uh, he does this on a lot of his bronze fittings. He sand blasts it down and then takes a steel blue and completely blackens it out and then can actually relieve some of that blackening with a little bit of steel wool. So you've got black with highlights of bronze running through it. Kind of gives it a little extra depth, some new colors and all of that. Exactly. It looks really, really nice. So after I've gotten finished doing the final little touches up on these bronze pieces, I'm going to sandblast them down and then try to get a nice even finish with this super blue from Birchwood Casey. So let's unscrew it and get to it. I think that'll work. I think that'll work very nicely. I think that's just a small little touch, but I think it's gonna be just fine. And it now means that we actually have the same width on this flat spot as we do on this flat spot. I think it lines it up well, divides it up, gives it a little better balance of color.
All right, we've got pretty much all of the bronze shaping done up. All of those pieces are sitting in our little safe space for them. This is the first pommel that Niels made. He wasn't happy with it, so we went ahead and made another one. They both look fantastic. But this means that this can now be our test piece. So I'm going to go ahead. I've masked off a little section on it with just some masking tape uh, to see if that will be enough resistance for the sandblast uh, that it won't get through because we're going to have to figure out a way to not sandblast the diamond settings that Alec did in that little spacer. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to sandblast this thing down. We're going to try the bluing on it to see how well it darkens up. Uh, and then we'll be able to move on and do the actual sandblasting and final finishing and bluing and all that good stuff on the actual pieces for the stiletto. So we've got some ultra fine quadruple lot steel wool. That's what we'll use to bring it back a little bit. Ooh. There it is. Oh, let's go show Alec. That's pretty cool. You can do all kinds that of stuff. That is special. Think about how the diamonds are gonna look. Shiny and then dark like that. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be crazy. That's super cool. So good. Nice! All right, we've got all of our steel pieces ready for the etch. Now that means that I'm gonna take this piece of black iron wire, string it through all the handle pieces, dunk them in there. Uh, it's just a good way to hold them so that we're not, you know, it's not contacting anywhere, it's gonna prevent a good etch. Uh, and then the blade, we're just gonna etch regular ways. And while those are sitting in the acid, we're gonna go out, sandblast down all of the bronze pieces, and then go ahead and do a little bit of blackening on those. By the time we're done with that, we should be able to take those pieces out of etch, scrub them down before we go into the coffee etch, and we'll be able to do the final fit up, and it will be done. We're good. We're good. It's good. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and make up some of this instant coffee, which will then etch a nice dark oxide layer that looks even better than the ferric chloride etch. I'm gonna go ahead and throw those Damascus parts in there and continue the blackening process for the bronze pieces. All right, we got ourselves a little, little apparatus here. Going into the coffee. Let that sit for a bit. Let's go sandblast some parts. Now you remember the piece that I set diamonds in, that spacer piece? Well, after it was masked, Will sandblasted the unmasked surfaces and gave them the patina. Now of course, that patina line, there was no way that we were going to mask it perfectly and just get this gorgeous straight patina line. We knew that wasn't going to happen and so, you will note, I have diamonds, I have a cut either side of the diamond to reflect light in, but what we're going to do now is either side of that groove, we are going to put another groove. Now that means that we have a certain distance to account for the fudging and the inevitable lack of accuracy in the patinering process. It is also going to mean that when we look straight down, we have another dark line running down here. A little more detail, a little more interest. It's going to look quite good. It's going to be Relatively simple, I have 12 cuts to make, and I'm going to use a 120 degree graver. Okay, so we went through the etching and the coffee etching process, I'm just not quite happy with how it came out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go all the way back around Totally, I'm going to clean off all of the 15 and 20, 2500 grit. I'm going to buff it up to a nice mirror. The same thing on the other Damascus pieces. The washer came out really nice, but these things all need to get re-etched. So we're going to go ahead and get into it, get this thing finished up.
Well, I am just thrilled as to how that second etch has come out. That steel looks wait, wait, gorgeous. Wait wait, wait. wait, wait. Are we not going to talk about the fact that we need to re etch again? We need to re. What? Now, after the second etch, holy moly, Will, this is looking glorious on two of three sides. And, well, about 90% of the third side, even. But there's a smudge. So it needs a second edge. Third edge. A second second edge. It needs a doubly second edge. Which all we'll have to do for that is the coffee, because it's only in the dark part, which is good. So not only does that need a second coffee edge, but it just doesn't really feel like the colors, like, flow all too well. We have this super light area here in the middle where we have the diamonds, where we don't have deep recesses to hold it in patina like we do in these other areas, these other pieces of bronze. We have deep recesses holding patina. That patina can't be polished and as it's held in time, because this is a very tactile piece, whoever has this thing, they're going to be holding it, they're going to be playing with it. The patina is going to be wearing in its own way, but as it wears, these dark spots will still stay dark, whereas everything on this ring is going to get polished. I don't think those colors work. So we have had an idea, which is to add some grooves inside of this ring so that we can re-patina it and create an area where that darkness is captured so that we can really keep that light and dark and light and dark and light and dark theme going through this. Hopefully continuing to build this and evolve this into an even better piece than we could have possibly drawn, than we could have possibly imagined. And that's the goal. That's the dream. And so we still have lots to do, such as another etch and some more filing. Hopefully I don't accidentally rip out any diamonds, but we're gonna jump into that. I have cut with the graver grooves, filed the grooves, stippled them so that we didn't have to come back in and re-sandblast that area, and I have refinished it under the microscope using some of that cold blue, and uh, there's still a lot of schmoo in there from the Q-tip, the oh. earbud, like where it's caught in the stippling, and I don't know how thrilled I am with the color anyway. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this apart. We're gonna put this piece up to it. We're gonna see how it looks, and uh, we're gonna have to work out a plan here. So, what it is that I'm nervous about is we have a very dark piece emerging. It's looking super cool with that dark theme, and I am worried that we are going to be pushing a little too far in the wrong direction with the amount of color that this spacer has here. So this is, the idea here is we maybe touch up the high spots a little bit, mm -hmm. you know? Okay, a little bit of buffing on those high spots. Makes the piece much lighter. It's giving it a lot more contrast in the lows. And uh, Will pointed out another problem that that's created. Is that you can see any of the discrepancies, any slips of the file, any, any unevenness pops out a lot more when oh, there's yeah. a black to bright yeah, you can't you can't lose it in the in the in the mud there. No. This is one of the problem spots right here. A simple slip of the file obviously absorbs all of that blackening compound and means as soon as it wears, you see it so clearly. There is no room for slip ups on this. You know, everything else is almost done. This is the last bit. Okay, after more discussion, plans as follows. We are going to go way deeper inside those little round grooves. Deep as can be, try blackening it. If we still are concerned, we're then going to bring everything to a bright polish. This is inching our way forwards without having to completely destroy the nice finish that we already have on the rest of the pieces. Okay, so I'm down from Ooh. the upstairs, and I think it looks oh, yeah. much better having that real wide groove on there. 
Oh yeah. Oh my, it is very shiny, because obviously there is no black ink on it. Oh my gosh. But I think that that is just utterly gorgeous. What are we gonna do with these finishes? Let's try buffing it from where it's at right now. Are Isn't we kind of at this point agreeing that we could just make this whole thing shiny? Yes. And just... If not, it's very easy to re-blacken this afterwards. Okay. So... That works pretty dang good. So Will's at the buffer, trying to buff off that black oxide finish to see if we can get that higher polish look again. Looks like an antique polish. Oh, that's actually kind of cool. Oh, get, I see what you're talking about. Because you, you From got, the remnants of the sandblasting and the patina -ing. It's like an old mirror polish, you know? Now, we have a new toy in the workshop, which I feel very embarrassed for not having bought earlier. It is a Vacuum steam... Vacuum cleaner. Oh. Steam cleaner. Steam. <laughs> we have a steam cleaner. Steam cleaners are used for cleaning off buffing compound and just cleaning things really well. But the question is, what does the steam cleaner do to this from here? You want to try it out, Will, for the first time? Sure. That's a really special looking finish. Um, now, do you reckon it's worth giving that a hit on the micromotor? Yay or nay? Nay. I Leave like it for this, I like see it. how the other pieces look yeah. after some buffing. That's so shiny, you can hardly see it. You know what I think we should do? Put it together? I think we should put it together. I think that's a grand idea. Oh, yes. I think that looks Shiny's good. better. Shiny's better. Shiny looks good. Oh, my goodness. Oh. That looks so much better. Wow. We're that done. is it. We're done. It's done. Not quite. We need to build a stand for it. We need to take this all apart and do a final assembly, lock tighting everything together. Oiling all of the insides so that they won't corrode at all. Apart from where the Loctite is, because then you have no Loctite or oil. And then this bad boy is gonna be finished. We're gonna be making a little presentation stand for it, something so that it can be sat in nicely and display it in all its beauty. Wait, and we're then... gonna make it satin after all of this fine polishing? You said satin, something it can be sat in. A little satin joke. I didn't get it, but... You get it now? Yes. <laughs> it just completely derailed me, because I was about to let people know that we were going to sell it. <laughs> Speaking of, we're going to sell it. After we make a little presentation stand for it so that it can be enjoyed while it is sat in there, we are indeed going to be ready to sell this piece. So that is very exciting. And I hope we can find someone that wants this. It's just gorgeous. I'm blown away by this. We're gonna get everything clocked together, lined up nicely, and we're gonna get this bad boy finished up.
stiletto's done. Wow. Three parts. That was nuts. We have made one of the most glorious pieces. I mean, I certainly know, I look at this stiletto and I mean, I'm thinking to myself, this is one of the coolest things I've ever made. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to hold too. It, I mean, it's got, some, it's got some gravity to it. And it just feels good. I, that was such, such a thrill. Yeah. So exciting to have it done. And you know, we want to again give a big thank you to our friends Niels and Josh, Black Dragon Forge and Josh Smith's Knives. You know, they were here hanging out and the timing just worked out great. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is one of the great things about the blade smithing community is, you know, people just like to hang out, have a good time and kind of just share knowledge. It was mm -hmm. so much fun. So thank you Niels and Josh. Thank you guys for watching this. We are going to be selling this dagger. So be sure to check that out. Well, thank you again for your help. As we round off this great series, I'm gonna to thank today's sponsor, which has been NordVPN. NordVPN is all about keeping you safe while it is that you're on the internet. As credit card fraud is on the rise, as identity theft is on the rise, and as we are putting more and more of our information online, it is more and more important for us to be able to secure that. So what Nord does to keep you safe while you're on the internet is they have thousands of servers. Now these servers will access websites on your behalf and when they send the information back to you, it will be encrypted. Now that encryption is military grade encryption and it's only through NordVPN's app on iOS, Android or on PC or Mac that it's then unencrypted to allow you to seamlessly browse the websites you're browsing. Now you won't even know that the VPN is running, but what you will know is that you're safer while you're on the internet. Nord is the only VPN to get a perfect score from PC Mag, and they made sure to test and see, is your VPN gonna be slowing down your internet a whole lot? Nord does not do that. Keeps your internet lightning fast. Now their apps are super easy and intuitive to use, and it makes it a breeze to select different servers. Being able to select from all these servers is also super duper handy if you wanna access streaming services not available in your country. Say you're traveling, say there's a show that you wanna watch that's only available somewhere else. You can have up to six connections at once, so you and your family can enjoy this security too, and it is risk-free because there's a 30-day money back guarantee. So be sure to hit my link in the description, nordvpn.com forward slash forge. You're gonna be getting 75% off a three-year plan as well as one month for free when you use code forge at checkout. Thank you, Nord, for being a longtime sponsor of the show, keeping me safe on the internet, keeping you guys safe on the internet. Thank you guys for following along with this just phenomenal journey. It has been so much fun. Remember, if you want to own just one Gorgeous piece of work. This stiletto is up for grabs. Thank you all so much. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.